Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Marvin. For those of you who are here for your first time, um, I'm a senior associate here at the firm. A topic that I've coined for this uh, evening session, which is directors, personal liability during and after resignation. So the first thing that we have to consider is what is uh, personal liability and, and how does that differ with the concept of uh, liability for the company itself. Um, of course, as the name suggests, or as the word suggests, it's personal in nature. So meaning to say that uh, I'm sure you, most of you here are familiar with the concept that for companies, they are a separate uh, legal personality. So generally speaking, if you are a director or you're an officer of the company, uh, liability should not attach to you personally for any uh, debts that the company uh, owes. Uh, so that brings me to the question of why then is it personal? In, in what circumstances uh, can liability then be personal to a director of a company? A lot of, uh, a lot of people are under the uh, misguided uh, impression that so long as I set up a company, I, I, my liabilities do not attach to the company, to the third point, which is um, the liability of a director, whether or not they can be uh, made liable once they have ceased to be um, a director in the company, once they have officially put in their papers and they've resigned and that has been lodged with the SSM. Um, the question that commonly we are asked is, can I still be made liable? I've officially, been, I've officially left the company. Um, the short answer is yes, you can be made liable provided the uh, impugn acts um, were done at the time you were still holding office as a director of the company. And I'll go through some of the very, very common uh, um, issues that crop up for individuals who seem that, who, who, or, or like to think that, oh, just because I've left the company, I no longer owe these uh, duties to the company. It's true, in, in some extent, uh, once you have ceased to hold office, you no longer owe a duty to the company, but during your time that you were there, if something has not been done or something has been done uh, improperly, then that liability can still follow you uh, after. And sometimes directors will be very, very, um, they'll be very, very sh uh, shortcoming with what they want to offer because they may acknowledge that, yes, they had run the company down, there were possible acts of misfeasance, so they will be very, very careful with what they release to the liquidator. And in that context, sections 502 and 503 of the uh, Act um, gives the liquidator the opportunity to examine these directors. So even if you have left your office, you have resigned, the liquidator could say, I went back two years ago and looked at the books. Something doesn't add up here. I have the right under section 502 to summon you to court to put you on the stand and examine you on uh, the affairs of the company at that time. So while that in of itself does not uh, attract any liability to the director, it's just a case of going to court and uh, attending like a witness. You know, you're just standing up there, you just ask questions, you're giving evidence on how the company has run and why were certain decisions taken in that manner. But usually in practice, what we do, we use public examination as a stepping stone to mount a claim against a director.